Right now, many of you are stuck at home. Even though you are, you still want to carry on your daily activities. And what I'm finding is that a lot of people are calling in to have a conference with me because they've developed heel pain. Now, what's changed? Uh, if they haven't had an injury, why are they suddenly developing heel pain they haven't had before? Well, the two things they can do is they can go out and walk, uh, keeping their social distance, and they're doing more of it. But the second thing is, we are at home. And then what happens? <laughs> we take the shoes off, and we're going in stocking feet and bare feet, and even in Seattle, the weather's getting nice, so we're flipping on those flip-flops, and bingo, instant trouble. So the foot has to accomplish a couple of things. You've got to be able to bend at your ankle, and then you've got to be able to bend at the ball of the foot. So <laughs> we don't want the foot bending in half in here. It's not supposed to do that. That means the shoe is supposed to be supporting you the same way. Bends at the ankle. That it can do, because the ankle is above the top. But then when we take the shoe from front to back and really force it hard, it should bend at the ball, not in the middle. This shoe qualifies. It's fine there. Then if you twist it side to side, it should be fairly firm. And the back of the shoe also, the heel counter we call it, should be firm. So. People coming in and wearing these tennis shoes, Nike, New Balance, whatever it is, with mesh and squishy soles creates trouble. Well, here's a New Balance shoe, like the last one I showed you, so let's test it. Here's the ankle, moving fine. Here's the shoe bending at the ball, right? No, wrong. Let's really crank on it. I didn't really push harder, but I did push harder with both hands. Where did that bend? Right in the middle. Now twisted side to side compared to the last one, it's floppy. The heel counter is stable, but it fails on the other two tests, and that's what it's going to do to your foot. Instead of it helping you to get forward, you're going to spend more time on the heel, not getting where you need to go. I didn't say shock absorption was bad, I said squishy cushy is no good. That rules out the flip-flop. So what do you do when you get home? I said you don't go barefoot. I didn't say you couldn't take off your shoes. So what do you do? Well, get into something that has some degree of stability, more than a flip-flop. That leaves a lot of shoes out there. That leaves things like Crocs, Merrells, and other Tiva sandals, or Keens, all kinds of sandals out there. They're going to feel a little different on each of you, but this better is more supportive than you're at. Other things to help yourself. Biofreeze, if you get that heel pain, it's temporary relief of pain when applied to the heel and can really help bring it down somewhat. Ice, 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off. A frozen water bottle while you're watching your favorite news or not. And roll it over that foot to massage and use icing into the heel. What about heat? not during acute inflammation. Finally, adding support to the shoe. If you take the insert out of the good shoe that I showed you, and you look inside, most of these good shoes are totally flattened there. And here is our arch support that came with the shoe. Here's my story about that. When I can roll this up, like that, like a piece of taffy, and stick it in my shirt pocket, that's the sum total of the support that came with your shoe. So, yes, you just spent a good amount of money on a good athletic shoe, and now I'm telling you to add more support? Well, if you're in trouble, that may be helpful. Power Step, P-O-W-E-R-S-T-E-P, -E -E excellent company making a over-the-counter support. Not rock rigid, bends at the ball, not really in the middle, has a little cushion added here. And you notice the square part of the heel on this one. Um, that also adds to stop you from over rolling in or over pronating and relieve stress on your arch. Super feet are also okay. This power step a little more shock absorbing. S O L E, soul supports, no pun intended, also helpful. Now, lastly, the other key culprit in this whole thing is tightness of the calf. 
And it's, it's twice in the last week, people come to me through telemedicine, and I can observe during their walking, I have their own description of the very hard heel strike, uh, tightness overall, you know whether you're tight or you're loose or flexible, that they have very tight calf muscles. Without going into a long story about it, a tight calf just doesn't let your ankle bend, and when that happens, the force goes into the foot and adds to the heel pain. So calf stretching can be really, really helpful, and you can refer to our website for more information about tight calves and stretching exercises. Um, that said, if you're still in trouble, sometimes we cheat. And how do we cheat? Well, if I lift up the heel, I'm not telling you to wear high heels for the women, but if we lift the heel slightly, that'll relax the calf muscle temporarily while you're working to get the inflammation down. How do you do that? This is a pair of firm heel lifts, not squishy. They are rubber and they do compress. That's a little much, but a quarter inch, this particular kind, adjust the heel, heels apart. So you get a little quarter inch lift and when you stand on it, it's going to compress some. That will elevate your heel, relax the calf muscle, and along with the over-the-counter supports may well diminish your pain. So, with all that, we wish you to be safe and well, and if you're still having trouble, contact the office. Let's have a telemedicine call and reduce your pain and keep you out there walking during this stressful time.